Hi, my name is Jane Scarf, and I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And what I wanted to talk to you today about is mandate uh, law, mandate law, mandate contract versus statute. So there is a, a misconception about what a mandate is. Uh, many people will say a mandate is not law and a mandate is not enforceable and that's not correct. A mandate is, uh, can be a law, it can be a regulation, which is not a statute, so it doesn't, doesn't have as high of, a, of a authority as, as what a statute does and a, and a regulation is dependent on a statute to bring it into effect. Uh, so, um, still uh, not clear exactly what diddling they did to create a regulation into a statute. I, uh, but it didn't appear to go through the, the proper procedures, but they're acting now as though the ROA is, uh, is a statute. And it started off as a regulation under the Emergency Management Civil Protection Act. And we have no more state of emergency, so what they're doing there, and I don't think any of that's going to hold up. Like if you have tickets under that, it's like you know, it easily, and and plus it violates all kinds of rights. Those 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 bylaws, like masks, uh, vac vaccination passports, um, lockdown, all of that violates rights, and clearly, and a, a bylaw is how it's it's enacted. So I always say rinky-dinky bylaw is going to override your rights? I don't think so. Anyway, then there's another kind of mandate, which is not a law, uh, which still may have some enforcement capacity because it's a contract with the government. So they may be able to fine you, for example, if you don't adhere to the contract mandate that you've engaged in. So <clears throat> with vaccination passport, there's a, a process going on where the government is asking employers to offer a service, a law enforcement service, to require their customers to um, identify themselves first of all and then provide a vaccination passport before they have services. So there's even like a, a, a sanction being applied by the employer uh, that's being asked of them because they're being asked to da 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 and don't provide services if you don't get the pass. So once or when it's offered, it's not a mandate. It's basically a, an offer of a mandate, and the subject is free to accept or reject the offer. So the employer could say, "Yeah, no, not into it," and then it's nothing. But if the employer says yes. I will do that and I think there's even paperwork that they do and uh, once it begins uh, actually I, I did see something where they're agreeing to pay for a course or something for the, the employees that are going to enforce this so it's it's a very formal for, formal uh, process that's going on so once the employer does agree it is a mandate and to some extent we're not sure how or what they will be enforcing it. So, but <laughs> it's on, it's that the employer is, you know, creating the, 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 the uh, or giving it the power uh, to enforce. So the short answer is uh, mandate is law, but it's not statute and it's subordinate law and it is enforceable, but it's also challengeable, very challengeable, especially when it's full of uh, violations, including criminal code violations when you do these things, because it's uttering threats, it's extorting, you know, trying to make people do things they don't want to do. Like they may not, they might even be agreement with the fact that the vax, they've had the vax, but they don't want to run around town showing their ID and their medical information, you know, so by saying we can't have service, that's pressure to do something that you don't want to do and of course it's also like designed to be pressure on the on the person who who uh, doesn't want to have the vaccination either so uh, there you have it it's uh, it's not 
easy to understand because it's very complex and I, I think it's made complex on purpose. You have three elements of the vaccination passport going on right now. You have, um, you have a Directive 6, which is a public health directive under the, the uh, Health Protection and Promotion Act, uh, which is directed towards healthcare workers, employees, but yet OSHA says that employers cannot require medical information from their employees unless there's a court order, a tribunal decision, or a statute, not a rinky-dinky bylaw, or a directive, or whatever, like it's statute. So, uh, and, and also the um, Health Promotion and Protection Act says if there's a conflict between their act and OSHA, OSHA prevails. So, basically, Directive 6 is nothing. Puff and, puff and smoke. And the, uh, the other one is uh, the employer, what we talked about earlier, the employer is being requested. And then there's uh, an implication in the ROA that people must adhere to the directives. So still, OSHA is a statute and the, uh, the ROA uh, regulation is not statute. So that one really is challengeable. It's, it's, they're enforcing it, so I can't say it's not enforceable. It, it is like they are enforcing it, but you can challenge it because it's not valid. Like the whole thing is not valid, uh, ultimately in law. Like the, the principle of law is that we're all supposed to agree to it at some point. So that's why the formal, you know, just debate and voting three times and royal assent and public consultation that's why we have that. And, and we certainly never uh, agreed to allow a sitting government to just willy-nilly override your rights. And I have other things that I, w I would like to say about this whole process, but I'm going to end it here because I just wanted to, to uh, give sort of a, a deeper or broader uh, uh, explanation of um, mandates. So you have, just to sum up, you have statute, which is the highest form of law, and then you have regulation, which is a subordinate form of law, and that subordinate form of law is a mandate, is considered a mandate. And then you have a contract, a mandate can also be a contract with the government, in this case, a contract with the government, and it, it, I don't know what they're gonna do. Like, they could fine people, like they've undertaken to do it, and then they change their mind, they don't wanna do it. There may be consequences, there may be fines that are passed out by bylaw or police or whatever. We don't know how these these contractual mandates are going to play out because they're just they're just in the in the uh, infancy form. Okay, so that's it for the day.